So if you, the way you describe things, if you mm. choose those words powerfully and in the now, like I want in the future, I want this. Well, the future never comes. We have to be in the now. Yeah. Like if you were on a train going somewhere, if you would be describing by the time you get to your destination, what would it feel like? Are you how ecstatic you'd be for being in this sacred place? Yeah. So you have to describe it as if you've already got it. Yeah, so it's the I am, I am statement. Yeah, okay. It's also I choose. Like yeah. I have years ago where you might say, even though even though I'm nervous of putting myself out there, I choose to accept the challenge and put myself out there and get amazing outcomes regardless of people's judgment. So mm. you three kind of statements. So even though I'm scared shitless of popping my head up, it's like the soldiers in the trenches. If you become the tall poppy, you're going to get your head shot up. Yeah. And, and that was number one, was it came up with who do you think you are? So for me, that's about being seen. Yeah. It's about being heard and about being judged. Yeah. Remember that children should be seen and not heard. Yeah. So we make ourselves invisible for safety and security. So mm. one of the about this is if I stay invisible I really want to do this but if I'm invisible nobody can chop my head off cut my head off shoot my head off in the trenches in the war when they put the head up you're gone and nobody yeah. can make bad judgments about you like who the fuck do you think you are get back know your place get back to where you belong so it's it's that this is feminine coming down the line as in women knowing the limitations mm. it's ancestral stuff of if you look at cultural of like no place women women have to walk so many paces behind not be seen to be out there what whatever it is that's kind of you know you know what your cultural history is yeah me, it's like you're trying to break the mold. So there's some yeah. ancestral feeling there, isn't there? Yeah. So when you say, um, when you say, I want to, winding it back to that is, I think, first off, there needs to be some ancestral mapping out, number one. Yeah. Map out what women are allowed to do culturally. Yeah, right? yeah. Map that out, or you're allowed to do. What are you not allowed to do? And then what you're not allowed to do is going to be your, your launching platform in a way to overcome mm. in you. Because how can you get out there if inside you've got this, if you got, oh my God, I'm going to break the shackles of my past, the shackles of my mm. women, my ancestral line, and you are then sacrificing yourself, putting yourself out there, so you could be the sacrificial lamb that dies on your sword. Mm. That makes sense, as in, mm. you know, it's like, it takes, it's like the first suffragette. Think about the women who didn't have the vote. And men could do everything. And the parliamentary people decided that women couldn't vote. Yeah. It's silly little things in your head and you don't know anything about and how to run a country. So it's it's really, this is at the archetype of a powerful woman. Yeah. But not just a powerful woman, a teacher. Yeah. Fear, she knows what's coming so she can see how to how to change it yeah then she's going to be an influencer yes that's it yeah so when you think about them early women that would die for the vote and then a lot of them were force fed in prisons 
I, I yeah. looked and I did a, a thing about this um, in the women's and it was like men didn't want to be judged and say, we let them women die. But in a way, they were saying, one threw herself in front of the king's horse and died. Mm. And that's how women got the vote. But it took a long time to go mm. to the... I think Australia was one of the later ones. Yeah. So it was saying, no way are you equal to a man. Yeah. And no way, I mean, look, like you know, if you've been in corporate, women break through that glass ceiling and they, a lot of them are better than guys at running because they, they've got, they've got vision, they've mm. got, got even them, they reckon that if, I remember Greg Braden seeing him and Bruce Lipton together years ago, I followed them for years. Mm. Greg Braden said, if we move from our head, you know, mental body, into trying logistic thinking and moved into our heart and felt it wouldn't really be any wise because you would run with them feelings rather than I'm going to dominate mm. make all the workforce do this and they've all got to follow suit there's no heart and soul in that business is there yeah that's right so what you were trying to do is bring in a heart and soul yeah that's what you want to, to do yeah. So for you to do that, you need to really map out all your ancestral stuff. Yeah. Because that could, is what's coming up for you when you want to passionately talk. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Can I do this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who in your family is going to judge you and say, what gives you the right to fucking stand up like a prime minister, a woman, and be a leader, an influencer, mm. a teacher? Because they'd be thinking more strategic. And when you look at spiral yes. dynamics, mm. it's much higher than that. I mean, hearts mm. are structure and order and having systems. You want to go to the absolute crown chakra and say yeah. I want them all to be passionate working for this company that's allowing them to be in every facet of the being and some mm. people say, what the hell does that mean <laughs> mm. so there's a fair bit of um, unpacking to do around your yeah. vision yeah absolutely yeah so the, the thing I would start with is look at you, you are the one restricting you. Nobody sat you down and said, no, you can't do this. Yeah. You're a woman, you've got a culture that doesn't allow women to do it. It's your cringy of when mm. you want something like that statue in Brazil. I am woman, you know, I can be anything, do anything. Uh, be do have I can be who I want. What mm. I want. You're, it's you restricting you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's just me. So, what's the worst thing that could happen if you did that tomorrow? If you set out and you started to go around companies and say and go around and say. I'd like to have a strategic meeting with um, the head of the corporation and give them an offer. <laughs> so dynamic of your world. <laughs> well, for a start, I wouldn't do that. But worst thing that could happen is they'd go, look, thanks so much for coming in, but we're not interested. Yeah. That's the worst. So in a way... For you to go in and be bigger, bolder, brighter, mm. you've got to start small in a way. Yeah, yeah. So it's like start small. If you could map out, um, and I can take a shot of this and send it to you. If you could map out um, some simple benefits 
that if you talk to a company about putting a heart and soul in the company so it was a living entity. Yeah. And at first they might, some, some would run with it and others would think, what the hell? See, if they're very, if they're very in the male brain and it's all like meeting targets to me, mm. if you got people on board and said, wait, look, we can't go on to them about moving from 3D to 5D. But in effect, if you move to that feeling and people love the feeling because they have a great connection and they felt mm. that the hearts, even if you don't see it, were joining up and aligning, mm. that conscious collective would move the company forward better than one birth being, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. So it's like they're collective. And you know how you could sell this? Yeah. You tell them about the negative conscious collective at the moment, how it's meant people are in fear and not in their heart. Mm. Well, they're fearful they're not going to have a job. They're fearful that if they have a job, it will come to an end and they'll have no income and they can't have the house, lose the house. They'll look, they might lose the wife, the car, everything. Yeah. So if you talk about fear versus love in that sense of it's real at the moment because people are yeah. fearful of the unknown, aren't they? Yeah. You don't yeah. have to sell that because it's all around you. Yeah, it's that's right. Amazing, isn't it? So if you talked about the conscious collective and use that as an example, how can people be created if you're in fear? So this yeah, is that's going right. To, this is going to be mm. your stats of how you would describe that to someone would be mm. you a little PowerPoint of if you ask someone to do a dynamic sales and marketing for a product or a company, whatever it is they do, mm. everyone's constricted and fearful. It's going to be boring and dry, isn't it? You never mm. know the people that you're selling it to are not going to run with it because there's no feeling. Like if you said this company could double its takings and you go, and they say, well, how could they do that? You would say, because when people feel what it's giving them and doing for them, and they get mm. excited and come on board, so it's, again, it's that feel, seeing. And it's like, how would they then describe to their friends, oh, my God work for this company and when you drop in at a meeting and you're all on the same page and you feel that Mexican wave go around the meeting everybody goes yeah we want this we want this. Mm. getting over the winning finishing line isn't it mm. whatever the, whatever it is they're selling if yeah, you put yeah. everyone on board rather than half well a lot of people, when they go to a boring job, will be like, oh, I mean, I took students for nine years in nursing. And you get RNs, seven in the morning, going, oh, only seven and a half hours and I'm out of here. And I used to think, how can I leave a student with you? You shut down. You're negative. You're not going to teach them because half of them don't want to be witness if they cut corners and they're not. They, mm. they're not so I and the student and they say and I'm not having a student and the student would start crying and I, there's no way I'm leaving a student with this person. I would find somebody that was enthusiastic, conveyed a really great energy about even though you know we're going to have a heavy day today, we're all going to pull together and we'll have a bit of a laugh. That person will move through that obstacle easier than somebody going, oh, only mm. seven hours and I'm out to be. <laughs> it's like saying. Only 15 years and I'm retiring and I'm, I'm going yeah. to You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You've got one foot in the grave, haven't they? Yeah. And exactly. They're not, they're not really living, they're existing. Yeah. Yeah, so what, okay. What you're actually looking for in your influencer um, is energy is everything, as you know. 
Yeah. And it's like, you are saying that if you've got people that are passionate about what they're doing in a company and then you engage them, use them as champions to move the energy of people that have got one point mm. in the company. Mm. So if they work out, and you can do that with a really good workshop, I've done it. But I've had guys throwing chairs around saying, we don't do emotions, and they're flinging chairs across the room, and they're like, oh, you don't do emotions, what's that, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm angry that you're making me feel. And they will actually yeah. throw chairs across the room. Yeah. So if you get energetic people, and then you get them as champions, and you want to drive change, them are the ones that will move it in that corporation. Yeah, sure. let's let's take it back a couple of steps. I actually don't want to go into corporate. That's All every right. time you every time you say that, I cringe because I really don't okay. want to go in. This is a, you know, I want to start mentoring women, start mentoring business right. owners who right. are not corporate. I, I just right. I can't see myself That's going okay. back to corporate. You didn't clarify that bit. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my fault. I was just trying to get my thoughts. Okay. back in order no i just i can't think of anything worse than stepping back right. into corporate well, i was wondering how you'd do it to be honest but no 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 don't want to of, what kind of companies would these women run then as in what would they what businesses would they be into oh I really don't know. I, I, I haven't targeted a business. I'm, I'm just targeting women. Okay. So these women that are business owners, mm. what would you imagine that they're going to sell and who would be their clients? Mm. Like, who would they be selling to? Wow. I don't know. I have a mental block. Do they right. have to be business owners? They don't Do these... have to. No, they don't. That, 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 that's what I'm trying to, that's, that's what's unraveling in my mind. Like, they don't have to be business owners. Why am I targeting just business owners? So, mm. maybe find them, revisit. You want to work solely with women. What do you want to switch on in them? Hmm. Wow. Um, what do I want to switch on in these women? So bring them back into their feminine. So are you assuming that they're not in the feminine then? I am assuming that, yeah, just judging by what what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing out there in the world. Yeah, but but it's it's switching them back to the um it it's the power of the feminine. So can you describe, close your eyes, <clears throat> so you look at an avatar here, like what, what age target would you be targeting of women? They'd be in their 40s and 50s and probably older than that as well. I'll put 40 and 50 plus. Yeah. What... Um, what would be the, you were describing them, how do they keep fit? Mm. Oh, a variety of things, how they'd keep fit at 40 to 50, they'd be doing yoga. Yeah. 
they'd be doing Pilates, they'd be doing walking, bush hiking. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of food would be eating? Oh, green, organic. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm not seeing fast food at all. Um, home cooked meals. Would they eat out? Yes. Where would they go if they ate out? Ah, oh, they would go to nice restaurants. Nothing yeah. too, yeah, yeah, nice restaurants, nice um, Thai restaurants, Asian cuisine, Middle Eastern cuisine. It would be nice food. Right. Would you think a lot of them would be vegetarian or meaty? Bit of both. Bit of both, yeah. Okay. What kind of car would they drive? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it'd be a four wheel drive, a Volkswagen Golf. Um, what else would they drive? <laughs> Yeah, the big cars, big four-wheel drives. <laughs> no sports cars. Right. So does that mean they're going, they like going to the country? Yeah. Yeah, going, they're hiking, bushwalking. Yeah, going back into nature. A car that's good for going yeah. uh, like over rough ground if they have to. Yeah. Yeah. Would they be single or would they be coupled up or would they have lovers? Um uh, they would they would be making their own choices and, and putting their own labels. Whether it's whether it's married, paired up, it'd be on their own terms. So they would actually um, have unique relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Not not run of the mill, they get married and stay for the next 30 No. Months. No, no. Would they have children and grandchildren? Uh, yes, they'd have grown up children. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And if there was no COVID, what would they do if they want to nurture and nourish themselves and travel? What kind of things would they, where would they go when they travel? Um, let's see. They'd get back to the water. They'd go to beachside resorts, beach resorts. They would go to, oh, skiing. Of course, they'd be skiing. Um, they'd be would going they to... Would sorry? they have a retreat somewhere? Um, yeah, out of the way retreats, like unique type of retreats, not run of the mill. Nothing about them is run of the mill. So unique, unique, yeah. like yeah. Kathmandu or somewhere like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Challenges. So really they're adventurous. Yeah. And they've broken the mould of who they should be. Correct. Oh my God, am I talking about myself? <laughs> so they're yeah, they've, be, they've, yeah, so they've broken the mould. Yeah, you've broken the mould because if, if your mould is stopping you from attracting these women, yeah. you, you have to live, breathe and eat this character, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of money would they be living off annually? Six figures. Six, six figures annually from 100,000 up. Because I won't be, I, 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 I'll be able to attract them because that's what I do. Right. Yeah, I'm not interested in trying to mentor. I mean, I can mentor someone who's making 20 grand a year, but uh, it's the language. How do we speak to them? Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be lowering your vibe. And to yeah, the that's right. Mm. Mm. Would they have like designer clothes, designer sportswear? What kind of, um, if, if you are creating 
you know, what would they go to Lulu and have yoga gear or would they? <laughs> <laughs> okay. They would know Lululemon because that is so pretentious, that brand. They would go to Lorna Jane. Lorna Jane, right. Lorna Jane, but they'd be able to afford it, but they wouldn't, it wouldn't be about, it wouldn't be about showing off the label or how much they paid. It would be more about, this is comfortable, this looks good, and this is going to last me for years. Yeah, so it wouldn't be for pretentious me. No, 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 not at all. Not more for practicality and it's going to last me for years. And it looks damn good. Yeah. Okay. So how would she balance everything in the life, this woman? This is your avatar. Mm. Mm. How would she balance everything? She, she has a self-awareness about when she needs to um, pull back. Yeah. She has a self-awareness of what her, she's very in tune with her body. So she knows what her body needs. And she's very intuitive to what her body needs. Yeah. Um, she's intuitive to her mental health, her physical health, her energetic health. Yeah. Yeah. Just I can just see this woman who's so so assured in herself. Okay. So she's not got lack of confidence or anything like that. No. Not at all. But she doesn't have to flaunt it. Yeah. Would she have investments? Yes, definitely. She'd be very money savvy. If she were a member of any groups, affiliates, or what what would be the overture of the groups? Um, it would be whatever group is out there to help humanity. Um, again, the money goes into well thought out donations. Um, uh, just whatever group would will actually. Ever fundraise, would you ever fundraise for a cause or anything? Yeah. Yeah. It oh would God. be to bene benefit all of humanity. Yeah. So. With we talking about groups um, and say they've got friends who are similar because they would draw to them similar yeah. kind of people, where would you meet these? Oh, it just could be at a local coffee shop, a restaurant. It could be out walking. Heaps of places. It wouldn't have to be at a business breakfast or a business lunch or anything like that. It would just be strike up a conversation you never know where it's going to take you so could you see that if you were to find um groups and there might be several different ones where you became a breakfast speaker or something if they'd all had a walk and done yoga on the beach and then every sort of friday morning they all mm. breakfast and sharing mm. Mm. That you could be an, a motivational speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, and and if you were to do that, um, you might need to do the rounds of several different groups. Mm. Because they wouldn't all go to the same coffee shop or coffee club. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Them might say I also play golf or something like that and, it, and I do women's competition yeah. or whatever so yeah for you to actually target these people you would have to it wouldn't be wide because you want a niche you're looking at That's a right. niche but what the niche would be um women and in this age group with money to play with with what you've described they go walking in nature yeah. and they might end up raising money for nature or wildlife or something when we've had the bushfires and disasters they might they might and they might also lobby to get things changed like like yeah. in the moment that's right 
cutting bloody trees down and yet most of them are burnt down. There's no habitat for koalas. Yeah. So it would be lobby for change. Yeah, yeah. So could it be that also you might need to be on the fringe of some of those gr groups where you were trying to get environmental change? I don't mean mm. burning things down or protesting. I mean consciously create mm. a powerful group that yeah. would have yeah. So, like environmental, there might be some special women who do that, who yeah. kind of want to save it for the grandchildren and next generation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, having raped and pillaged the earth, and look at all this lobster stuff now, where they sent it all to China, and they, they're all dying. They're just stood on a dot live lobsters like like mm. they're just like it's the bloody tree and it's a living thing isn't it mm. Mm. it's a sentient being they're just that's not treating it properly stop. yeah all yeah. of that should stop shouldn't it really yeah that's right that's right so this person then what can she learn what can you offer the if this is your avatar pick a name for her what she got just a name so that you know what your avatar is. We're making it come to life here. What would she be called? Um, some gorgeous name like Annabelle. How do you spell that? A double N A B E double L E. Right, Annabelle. I have a, a really brilliant massage on the top, Annabelle. <laughs> with me years ago yeah okay so what would a weakness be if she's got this amazing life and it's all mapped out and it's all mm. perfect what would your weaknesses be why would she need you because the the one catchphrase that i can hear them saying is there's something missing there's something missing. We just know there's something more, but there's something missing. Right. And that is the spiritual aspect. Yes, because it's like the living, there might be like the perfect wife, the perfect mom, yeah. the perfect yeah. grandma, or whatever job they've had. Like I, I remember thinking one day, God, I felt like the perfect nurse, the perfect wife, the perfect yeah. mother. For me, yeah. there was something missing. Yeah. And that's how I started yeah. for that. So exactly. That's yeah. Exactly. Because they, they they'll they'll know that there's something higher, something bigger, but they just won't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you then was to look at this female. Mm. So you've got what what they always say with Nishin is aim a bit narrow, like don't go 40 to 70 year old. Aim a bit, you might say 40 to 55, but yeah, that's other, right. If other people come on board, you're not going to say no, you're going to take them as well. But you might have a they kind of said to keep that niche yeah. narrow. Because if it's too wide and too broad, yeah. As, a 40 year old might be would be a lot different in their outlook than a 65 year old wouldn't they yeah that's right so yeah. it's like commonalities but um so then if you look at this avatar and you are going to find them would you need um connections that you've had to various people mm. to introduce you to these magical mm. things that you need to get into. Yeah. 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 And so even if it was a casual where they've had a big hike and they all meet in a certain kind of cafe or whatever 
you know, nice place. When they when they knock it and they get back near the car and they all go into an unusual coffee shop and they're all sat chatting. Yeah. Um, someone could pose propose that you they might introduce you that day and sell up. She's got some amazing stuff that she'd love to share. Can we book a date and a time? Yeah. And event? So you're going to get yeah. a book, a date, a time, and a venue. Yeah. That's right. To actually describe your passion. Yeah. So when you do your passion, and it might be something about your story. you're going to then say how you got latched onto the missing bit. Because there's a lot of people like this that we've just described, mm. where they're searching and they don't know what they're looking for, do they? Yeah, that's right. They might say, I've had, the, I've had a beautiful husband, he was the man of my dreams, I've got gorgeous kids, they're grown up, they've got grandkids, yeah. I'm doing all this, I'm walking, I'm, I've got money, there's nothing I really want, but there's some yearning inside me that's calling out to be fulfilled. Mm. So you're going to have to christen that yearning. Yeah. That fulfillment. Yeah. And that's going to be the topic of how you sell your passion and your purpose to them, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Great. If, All right. So let's you, bring let's let's bring yeah. it back. Let's bring it back. We've gone. Let me, let me just. Up, grab, great. Let me grab another. Oh, I've got one. Yeah, yeah. So I can see it. We've gone into the future, and it looks absolutely amazing. So that. Yeah, that 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 wouldn't be hard to do down here down in Tassie, then not at all, because they're all conservationists down here. Anyway, that's beside the point. I want to get back to the ancestral stuff, because even though I can see what I need to do, I can see the steps I need to take, this has been my question for many, many years, is what the hell is stopping it? There is something more than what I can see that's actually stopping me moving forward. Yeah, so this this is where I want to get to now. It's like, what is this ancestral stuff and how do I start to unravel that? Well, for me, it's an archetype. Yeah. So you've got in your psyche an archetype of the feminine. Yeah. That's coming down the line. And I would look at, I can see women crying and shrinking. Yeah. Not that they don't want to be women. The life was fucking hard. Yeah. Going back three, four generations. Yeah. The life was intolerable, I'm getting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think this was the plight of women, no matter what country you were in. It was like, if you look back in ancient times, the, the divine feminine and it shows all these statues don't it with the belly and the like the boobs and when the divine feminine you've gone back thousands of years now mm. then when you've got like marauding tribes like you're getting this town and people like that mm. and men who kind of battle and who conquered lands then then it became patriarchal didn't it yeah that's right. And when you have the patriarch, and like in the Western one, it was like the doctors and the church combined forces against women. Yeah. It's like the doctors, the early doctors, and the whatever church they were, whether Catholic or, you know, Protestant, whatever, they had um, a campaign to. To, to not just disempower, yeah. but to turn her into a bad thing like a witch. And also, if people were menstruating, they classed them as dirty. A lot of them classed them as dirty, didn't they? Mm. But it was like they destroyed the power of, of the feminine. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah. So how could you be a powerful woman with wisdom and knowledge and then convey that to younger girls that this was a magnificent thing when mm. men were cruel and harsh? Mm. Mm. So for me, there needs to be a description of women going back. You need to like write the pros and the cons of being a woman maybe three, four generations before you. Yeah. So you, you cre you're creating the archetype that they became. It might not be what they wanted, but you're yeah. going to describe the three to four generations. I mean, yeah. beyond that would have been even worse, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. So if you look at a woman in a, a person in the sovereignty, you've got vision, your truth, and this is who you are. Mm. Sovereign woman has got vision. She knows the truth. Yeah. And she knows it's it's who I am. Yeah. And she's achieved mastery. She's got full responsibility for making like a child, inner child dreams come true. She doesn't yeah. care about there she doesn't need security it's like the i am yeah when you've got the and you've got dreams visions and identity so a sovereign woman half of what your modern one will be missing will they don't really know who they are mm. They've got the trappings and the trimmings, but mm. they don't feel empowered and they don't feel some missing passion and purpose, but also the spiritual, spiritual aspect. Mm. So we look at the sovereign person. The opposite of that is the child, but it's also the prostitute. Mm. And at, I'm not talking about the prostitute you now where you sell sex. You sell to get to be safe and secure and get your needs met. You'll sell your very soul. Yeah. You'll be the people pleaser, the one that the doormat. Yeah. So the sovereign woman is like the child and the prostitute. So she's not going to have dreams, visions, and identity. She's going to spend all her time yeah. trying to get her needs met. Yeah. So if you also look at the lover, the lover is, this is what I love, this is what I can afford, this is what I'll sacrifice anything for my values. Mm. Again, opinion, power, self-expression, no sacrifice is too great to, to be your values and desires. It's mm. what values for the lover and yet it's what I value, what you will and won't put up with. And you want to be cherished and treasured and seen for this, again, sovereign woman. Yeah. If you look at the opposite of that, the prostitute compromises true values, desire and power for approval and security. Yeah. So it's like approval and security are the key things that they need. It's very similar to the child. It's like the mm. child almost cross over. So what they do then is that this is what I can or can't afford. This is I want, this is what I feel, do, think, believe, want. This is what I'll compromise in. So all the things that you say in your vision, your truth of who I am, they're willing to sell it out and just to get approval and security, mm. which they might translate into a form of love. Yeah. And like, it's easy then to become the doormat who seems, who gives everything to everyone else. Waits on the kids on them, put waits on the husband, 
works full time, comes on, does everything herself and nothing to nurture and cherish yourself. That's, mm. that's like the, the doormat, really. But it's also the prostitute. Yeah. So doesn't really fill, doesn't fill a tank of what nurtures and nourishes her and what pleases her. She's the sacrificial lamb and she's willing to die on her own freaking sword to be liked and loved mm -hmm. because she's deeming that hard work as you're trading it for pure love, aren't you? Mm. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm taking it all in. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. So writing down the pros and cons of being a woman for generations back. Where can you find all that out if you haven't got people to bounce off, like all elders, older ladies? Um, historical it's like you need historical stuff yeah that's going to be that's going to be really hard they didn't keep really good records um, so if you look at the prostitute and the lover mm. the prostitute is a survival archetype so she'll do anything to survive yeah yeah in other words she's root chakra yeah and she doesn't go up like Maslow's hierarchy of values where you say food, clothing, shelter, and when you get to the top, evolution, enlightenment. She never even gets there because she's keeping a roof over her head and mm. pleasing everybody to survive. And like, it is survival. But when you look at that, that's really damaging to a person's life. It's like they're living in fear. That part, yeah. that the Bible archetype is living in fear, and that fear yeah. is not coming. From, you're not in the heart. Again, it's the heart of what you want to instill in these women. Yeah. Yeah. So, the voice of the prostitute. It's like you're negotiating things to get that safety. But when you ask questions of this kind of stuff, it's like. How did you compromise your values in return for safety, security, approval, or recognition? Mm. You're selling mm. your soul, really, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And which is what I've been taught to do from a very early age. You never open your mouth, you never speak back, you don't have an opinion. So you just have to shut up and take whatever you get. So it's shut up and put up then. Yeah, shut up and put up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So have you have you had a quantum collapse done on your on your if you said the archetype of your feminine culture were the positives and the negatives, have you ever had all that collapse? No. But something what? needs to something needs to break, something needs to give. Well I, I can't see it. I can't see what I, it is. Well, you really need to do, it's a quantum collapse that, I mean, I've done the quantum collapse. I've done two workshops on it, but it's like you've got to collapse that um, embodied ancient archetypal woman that will sell her values and her soul to be liked, approved, yeah. and blend in as, you know, it's like, You've got to, the fear of not being what you were brought up to be. Yeah. Is that's what's holding you back. It's the fear of stepping out of that. Yeah. It's the fear of coming out <laughs> as a real yeah. you. Yeah, that's right. Always has been. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the only way to do that is, is like a quantum collapse quite lengthy there's lots of root clears wind it up really bad you know if you if you kind of we work if you want to do it you work out we work out um 
Like say you were quantum clearing Jesus and the devil. Mm. You might say, well, he was a fucking cult leader, Jesus. He got all these people following him. And then when they thought he was the hero, he died and he didn't lead them into a new, a new world. Mm. <laughs> it's like you wind it up really badly to collapse it and do the root clear on, on that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So what you need to be doing is writing down five to seven positives of the yeah. woman in your archetypal lineage and five to seven, now you have to match them in number, obviously, but that is a quantum collapse of, you know, this is why you are not running with the wolves and doing what you want to do because mm. all these women are playing through you. Like, mm. like if you look at royalty now, Harry is like Emily the Eighth. If you look at Emery the Eighth, it was funny. It was on, uh, I watched it on Netflix. The uh, the other Berlin girl, Emery yeah. the Eighth, obviously polyamorous. He wanted different women all the time, and because the Catholic Church wouldn't let him out get divorced, he broke away and formed his own, so he could yeah. Yeah, chop the heads off, didn't he? There were only one that kept her head, and but she was in prison for life. So he was an absolute tyrant for the sex. The demand on sex. So Harry is playing out the archetype, the rebel, the one yeah. who was buying women and song for years and he would film naked and, you know, after, after Diana died. And mm. when you looked at him, I could see he was playing out the characters that come down his lineage from Henry VIII. Mm. So it's like every now and again, that black sheep of the family surfaces in one person. And they, you know, when people say, Oh, you're just like your Uncle Fred. And you think, what? What was, well, he was cast out of the family because he was a rogue, a cheat. He learned to lie. He had half a dozen women. He had two wives and none of them knew it. And he took money off people. And we cast him out of the tribe because we didn't want to be associated with him. Mm. But in some ways, they were very colourful characters, weren't they? Mm. So you are the black sheep of your tribe. Yeah, that's right. I am. <laughs> oh, I know that. I know that. And that's yeah. fine. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm yeah. okay with that. But you see, it's the energetic um, links coming down the line that's stopping mm -hmm. you from being more outrageous than what you are. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. You were already, yeah, but you want to be in the fullness of No, I, I haven't stepped into how outrageous I can be, let me tell you. I, and I know that. And that's yeah. what I want to get to the heart of. That's what I want to clear. I want yeah. to get rid of that. I can't see it, but I know it's there. You're in like that. But some of it is actually like we've now mapped out your ideal woman that you want to work with. Yeah. It's it's like, you. all right, going back to your purpose, you say it. You really need a proper statement on purpose. So bringing back the teaching of the ancient Well. That's good and bad because the ancient, the teaching is all right, but it's not all right if it curtails women and puts them in a cage and they can't move. No, no, no. It's not that type of teaching. No, no, no. 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 Are, you talking, sexual are you talking about energetic healing? Energetic teachings, the teachings that have been buried like Hermes, right. hermetic well, teachings. Yeah. So... You need to have a proper written statement for your purpose. Mm. And measure the words as you pick words, as in, yeah. all right, when I was doing my studio and it went on for two years and it was really hard, having different traders and every now and again, I'd, I'd fall on my knees and think, oh God, I can't do this. I've forgotten why I wanted it. And it were interesting. I wrote out, I've got it on my fridge now, so I'll just grab it. And when okay. I did that, put me back on the So my vision for it was, my mission in creating a spiritual studio slash temple, a hub of wisdom, knowledge, 
Hackathon transmission will be wildly successful, attracting wider audiences who will engage in my offerings, which will elevate and bring transformation to their lives. My group engagement and deliveries will move more people into heart resonance. This in itself will vibrationally change the matrix. Mm. But yeah. I had to go through hell and I water. I knew yeah. I wanted I knew I wanted it to be a magical space and that I would be transforming people. But until I wrote something of that nature, yeah, I lost, yeah. I lost the clarity and the reason for why I was doing it. And to get me back on the passion and purpose of, look, it took two and a half years, a lot of work, an old tin shed. Yeah. And it was coming. But I had to rewrite something like that to tell my heart and soul why I was doing it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I want to start healing the grid of the planet. Anyway, okay. so that's another that's another story. That I choose, not want. That's number one. You yeah, were, oh, okay. Your words carry a massive vibration. Oh yes. So if you look at um, when you describe things, like I got this angel word story in virtue. I mean, she's. She's giving it all away now, and it's the work of the freaking devil. I, I don't know, it can turn over that. Oh, I don't know, I don't getting, know. Still getting royalties from it, but anyway, her and her son were doing a podcast. Mm. You know, how when you do a podcast, the words form. Mm. Mm. When, there's lots of examples, I use it in Reiki training not and workshops where people don't realize because your word is like it vibrates through your larynx. And then your brain picks up on that vibration and makes neuropeptides, as in yeah. protein molecules affect the nervous. So when there's examples of a woman saying, "My cafe, no one ever stops. I'll be, I'll be bankrupt in six weeks if this continues." Right. So instead of saying, "My cafe is a beautiful spiritual place that will attract people to come." And they'll all feel transformed when they come and eat and drink in my place. And I feel like my, my food sources are elevating mm. the heart. She said that how oh, bad and it was going to be that she'd have no money. Mm. When she started talking, in other words, when I write stuff, even if I'm doing a root clear, instead of just doing one word and I have a little phrase, I will test it out of 100. And if I get it to 300, I think, fuck, that's off the radar. We've got to run with that. Not, not a piss weak statement that mm. doesn't really change you dramatically. Yeah. I go for like 300% and 400% so that it just cuts right. You nail it. Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I people, you know, are like the doormat instead of just doing root clearing doormat i would say being the the eternal doormat or something along that nature which means you can never get rid of it so that when you yeah. clear that it's got a massive charge yeah yeah <clears throat> so you need to write your yeah thing really clearly because yeah. you read if it's not clear on the why, your big why, and it's not just to fulfill you, it's how you are going to make changes in everybody that you're going to be coming in contact with. Yeah. So you need to write your big why of why you want to be teaching the ancient and using your mystic and the seer archetype to get mm. set. You need to write that in a good statement. Mm. And then, yeah. then you need to be looking at your archetypal woman in your lineage that's really wriggling and coming to life every time you want to be outrageous. And if you do the healing for that, and it goes back and forward, you're healing seven generations. Yeah. You're not just doing it for you. You're actually doing it for those that went before you that suffered that fate. Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of work to do. Thanks a lot, Patricia. All right, so let me see. Oh, 
Um, okay, ancestral stuff. I've never dealt with ancestral stuff before. Okay. Sure. If you have you got any books from your culture that would have described like the plight of a woman who tried to make change? No, no. There would be there would be, if you like, visionaries who tried to do it um, so that it would be easy for others that follow. You need yeah. to start Googling it and, and like looking at, um, you know, like if I was to say look in English history, I would look at, say, the suffragettes who, mm. who decided not to be pigeonholed and that they had a mm. say in what happened in the country. Like, you know, if women... Well, look at look at the ancient heritage. If somebody had a big castle and they died, they didn't they didn't leave it to the woman. It might go forth down the line to a son, and the woman was penniless. Yeah, it's all of yeah. that really, and it's it's like saying women don't count. You don't have any power, but not only that, we don't see you. You're invisible. Mm. Mm. And you're voiceless. You're invisible and voiceless. So. Yeah. How can you be an influencer if you are invisible and voiceless? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You must know from like talking to grandparents when I know were... I didn't I didn't grow up with grandparents. We right. we we left Lebanon when I was about three and I never saw my grandparents again. Right. right. Yeah. So is is there any friends that you have? similar to you that that would know, that would have grandparents? Is there anyone that you communicate and talk to? No. No. No, 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 no. I, no. I doing a kind of historical search there because there will be something you might mm. come across the books if you search where women have talked about the plight of the feminine going back in time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can do a Google search on what life was like in Lebanon. Uh, more, you know. more, so, more so a woman's story. And you might yeah. find, might be a, a simple, um, what do you call it, electronic thing, Kindle thing you can download. And it will give you insight. And reading a story, you would then know what, well... Oh, what women had to put up with. I've done it because um, Renee Main interviewed me on a hedonistic queen show yeah. and asked me about why, when people came from England colonially, did they not bring like the heritage of the Celts and the Druids and all that? Mm. And I, I actually, she didn't fully tell me what it was about, but I started to look it up and it, it really opened my eyes. Well, the mm. Romans killed most of them anyway. <laughs> and then and then if you came like in Charles Dickens' days, because you stole a loaf of bread, you came in shame because you were either going to be hanged or deported. So yeah. why would they bring the culture? Because they were cast out of the tribe and they were in shame. That's right. It's not mm -hmm. hard to work out when you start looking it up. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So this is going to give you your, it's like, like going, instead of going to the pyramids, <laughs> you're going to look at women's plight. Mm. There could even be some little simple movies on it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Look, on, I can... on the alternative kind of, like SBS, sometimes they show movies, but there could, if you Googled life as a woman in going back, however yeah. many years you want to, I'm yeah. sure you'll find out. I think you'll be quite shocked, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I'll, I'll start there. I just want to see what life was like for them. And then, and then what? What's the purpose of finding out what life was like for a woman back in the 1900s in Lebanon? Well, you need to get them you to collapse what's coming down through you you need there needs to be a quantum collapse on yeah. those so that you can then 
you squeak the clean and none of those traits are going to be yeah. like I said okay. it's playing out parts of Henry the eighth without knowing yeah. it yeah you are playing out part of your ancestral women without knowing it yeah so until you identify the good the bad and the ugly the positives and the negatives yeah being a woman in whatever year you go back to and like yeah that's been it's not in the dna it's in what's that Google. i have no idea i wonder if my i ate that when your phone's talking because it's answering you Isn't that spooky you know if it says a word and then a google jesus christ oh yeah <laughs> like they're listening isn't it yeah oh they are all the time Okay, well, that makes sense. That now makes sense to me. You find out what the traits are, and then I have to collapse them on both sides, positive and negative, because it's the it's the uh, polarity. I've got to collapse both. It's yeah. not. It's, it, you shouldn't do that unless you've learned how to do quantum. You could mess yourself up big time. Um, There's a lot more to it. It's not just the root clears. Um, no, no, no. I know I'm not talking about root clears. It's about... Um, um, in NLP, we called it merging the two sides of your personality, negative, positive, because it's all part of you anyway. But then finding out what the highest good was for all that, for, you know, for all that positive. So I'm sorry for all that stuff that was going on. It's finding the highest good. All right, well, I don't know how to do a quantum collapse. No, I mean, I do. I've trained in it. I've done two lots of training in that over there. Yeah. I've done a lot of stuff over the five years yeah. but if you were to find out those like the plight of a woman however many years you want to go back yeah when you actually worked out some of the things it's look it's like that archetype of the prostitute in a way and the child it's like you've been kept either young or pleading and selling your soul to be safe and secure and kept mm. in the corner and brought out when you need it. I mean, you're not, mm. it's not living, is it? It's like you're in the shadows because you're not meant to be seen mm. as a woman of being. Mm. Exactly. You're meant, to aren't you? you're meant to comply and do as you're told. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Always do what you're told. Yeah. So when oh. you've kind of done that, maybe we need to get back and do some, some work on that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And then I'll I'll work on my purpose statement and my mission statement as well, and get some um, get some real energy behind that. I mean, just having your statement of what you want to do doesn't make mm. it up, does it? No. I've got a lot to think about. <laughs> I'm exhausted now. Thanks. I feel I feel like you've grabbed me by the throat or the back of the neck and you've gone like this. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, uh, now you can go, perhaps go and have a walk and do something physical. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Awesome. Okay. I've got some stuff to do. Not tonight. I'm not doing anything no, now. I'm putting, the, I'm putting this reality, away. Yeah, the reality is it's not your shit, but no. it's affecting you. So you've got to then do some okay. energetic work on it. And also yeah. it, it's going to heal back down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Because once you've done the, clear, the, the work on that, the quantum clear, you can then have a ritual honoring those women. You could do mm. thing. You could burn something. Go to the go to the ocean. Put some flowers in. Speak to them and say, "I'm now. I felt your pain, and I'm now getting rid of it, so it doesn't keep going down the line to other women." Mm. Mm. Exactly. The book's, the book's stopping with you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Sorry. No, don't don't apologize. It's fine. I knew it was going to be deep, and it has to come out because it's been it's been the same pattern for many, many, many years. 
and that's so why it kept coming up. Your body says, for Christ's sake, get rid of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, time for it to go. Cool, okay. How are we going to end the session? <laughs> well, I need your, your agreement that you're now going to do this work. Over. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'm not doing it. I'm not touching it tonight. But I will start tomorrow morning. I need, I need to research. I know I can talk to my mum. She can tell me about her life and her mum's life and yeah. her grandmother's life. Yeah, so that's that's now four generations. Yeah, that's cool if you've got access. To yeah, four but also I'd be looking at if there were some prominent characters like we had in England, the suffragettes, and some of them were wealthy people from mm. families, others were just normal everyday working class. Mm. But a lot of them died died to get the vote. Literally, some of them started mm. to do it. Mm. Not that we want to do that, but no. <laughs> awesome. Okay, no, you have my you have my absolute agreement. This is what I wanted. I wanted accountability. And enough's enough. Mm. So I'm you might go walk want, you, go know, on. you might want to kind of do a little Excel spreadsheet of when you're finding stuff out, a bit like a timeline. And um I think. Look, in the end, this could be a book for you. You might end up writing a book. <laughs> I've already started. I just keep stopping. I've, it's a story of my life. I do need to go backwards, though. Yeah, you're right. I do need to go back into my lineage because there's some rich history there. And that's the thing. It's paralysed will. You, you've yeah. got all around it. Yeah. And because if you start digging and you're bringing up shit and the men in the family might not like it, you know what I mean? You mm. are the, the feminine goddess and you were bloody mm. delving and they're going, hang on, hang on, women don't do that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. No, I, can we end the session? I can't take any more in. No, I that's really can't. Right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Maybe I need to carry a government health warning. That's, yeah, I think you do. <laughs> All right, Beware. Just put your hands on your heart and drop it. Uh, and just breathe into your heart and put some gold, some, bring some gold in from your crown and surround it by pink. And when you breathe in, in and out, see that pink vibrate and the gold pulsating. And see that then pulsating down to your solar plexus, out through your hands, back up through your crown and surround yourself with that beautiful gold, pink and put a green line around it and breathe and fill that space so that you then become like a tiny child in this beautiful big circle and all that love of the pulsating is feeded back into you, your tiny child. And the tiny child feels safe, secure, loved, but powerful. She's got an archetype standing next to her that is bestowing so much power down on her. And she starts to get cheeky, that look about her, laughing and dancing and twirling. And she's so ecstatic that she's got this feminine archetypal woman, you in the now, that's filling her with power, love, safety, security, and giving her the guts to stand taller than she's ever done. <sighs> and so it is. There you go. How does that feel? Oh, now I feel I'm back on earth now. <laughs> I don't feel like you've shoved me from corner to corner. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go take a walk around my beautiful yeah, garden. I think, I think you need to do something physical now. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to take a walk outside. The sun's out. My flowers are blooming. I'm going to go take a walk outside. 
And you, you a gardener, are you? You like gardening? No, not at all. It's just I inherited this beautiful garden that's now blessing me with so many beautiful flowers. Yeah, I've been looking at your picture. Yeah, I just, I didn't even know those flowers were peonies. I love peonies. Yeah, we used to have them in England, peonies. Mm. I think it's too hot here for them. Too hot. But up here on the mountain, it's perfect weather. Yeah. All right. All right, thanks so much. Listen, I'll transfer that money now. And do you want to leave it for two weeks? Yeah, I think you need two weeks. Yeah. And if you get stuck in between, just message me. But, um, I message you, yeah. yeah. I think you need to just be collating a bit of info to work with. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so Bye. much. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for <laughs> talking. Bye. A, I was expecting it. Bye. <laughs>